what we're going to be going over here is we're going to be changing from the fair value method here to the equity method for an ownership interest in another company. Now you use the fair value method here where you have a holding interest less than 20% and you change to the equity method if your holding interest uh, increased from 20 to 50%. So that's going to be our example here. So what we're going to be given here is we're going to have Investor Corporation A, they're going to have a share here in Investee Corporation B and they've made this investment here in Corporation B here and we're going to be looking at three years here for year X1 and year X2. Investor Corporation A has has a 10% interest here in Vesti Corporation B. That is, they hold 10% of Investi Corporation B's stock. That's outstanding. And then uh, year X3, they're going to change here from a 10% uh, ownership interest or share up to 30%. So they invested an extra amount here in Corporation B. And just, I'm going to look at it in detail later here, but their first holding interest, they invested a million dollars here in Corporation B. And then the next uh, uh, investment here and where they increase to 30% because they now purchase an extra three million dollars worth of Corporation B. So what we have to do here is we have to determine the share of net income that uh, Investor Corporation A would be receiving here from in the Investee Corporation B and also the dividends received. So our share of net income here. So what I'm showing here is everything is in uh, th thousands of dollars. 500 here represents like 500,000. So for looking at year X1, you have net income of, of Corp B, Corp A is going to get 10% of that, so 10% of 500,000 here is going to give them their share of net income would be $50,000. And year X2, net income here, Corp B was a million, 10% of that's going to give 100,000 here to Corp A. And then in year X3, there was 1.2 million here in net income by Corp B, and uh, Corp A is going to get 30% for 360,000. And then the dividends received, this is what Corp B, a got from Corp B. For year X1, they got 20,000 in dividends, year X2, 30,000, and year X3, 120,000. So what we're going to do here is now we have to deal with this change from the equity method here, uh, of the fair value method here for year X1 and year X2. We're going to have to change to the equity method here in year X3 because we have a greater than 20% ownership here. So the first two years we could use the fair value method here to account for our ownership interest in Corporation B. That is Corporation A's ownership and interest in Corporation B. But in year X3 we have to change to the equity method. So first thing we have to do here, uh, we have to determine the difference between our equity earnings and our dividends received and that's going to be close to uh, retained earnings, but we're going to go through that in detail when we look at our accounting, our, our entries here in our T accounts for that. But first off here, for year X1 and year X2, our equity earnings, we have that was that share net income here for uh, by Corporation A is going to get from Corporation B. Uh, 50000 here for uh, year X1, 100000 for year X2. Total amount of equity earnings that they'd have is 150000 That's the net income, uh, the percentage that they're going to, or the net income they're going to get here from Corporation B. And then we the dividends received, well, we had 20000 here in year X1, 30000 in year X2. So total of 50000 here for those two years here. So what we'd look at is our total equity earnings here, 150000 That was their share net income that Corporation A got from Corp B. And then the dividends received, we'd have to subtract that out here. And that was that uh, 50000 here. So net uh, close to retained earnings, $100,000. And I've got it broken down here for year X1 and year X2 if you want to look at those numbers. But this is, again, we changed to the equity method here in year X3. So we had to account for the difference here between our equity earnings here and our dividends received for the first two years here where we were using the fair value method. Okay, so maybe we can look at it a little closer if we go down to uh, when we use this equity and method account, we're going to set up an investment stock account here. And this is uh, how, we how we're going to be look at, we can look at it. And we have to, what we want to do is we have to determine the carrying value of the, at the data change here that we're going to be looking at here. So let's look at the case here where we increased our equity earnings. Uh, that was that in sec second investment where we increased it at 30% ownership in the company. So what the, what the, 
company is done here, or Corpray is done, uh, they have invested an extra $3 million here in the stock here of Corporation B. So we debit or increase our investment stock account here by $3 million. Now, what we would do here, just to look at it in these terms here, the investment stock account for that share of net, a share of income, and we're going to be looking at it over those first two years here, year X1 and year X2, that increases our investment account here. And that share of income, that was what? 50000 here for year X1, 100000 here for year X2. So debit or increase your investment stock account by that amount. Now, uh, those dividends that were received, that would reduce the investment account. That was the 20000 here for year X1, and 30,000 here for year X2. So totaling up our um, net amounts here, we have net amounts here, an increase to our share in net income, 150,000 here, the 50,000 plus 100,000, and then our decrease here to the investment account, that would be for the dividends received here. And again, this is using that equity method here. And we're looking back here at the first two years because we have to uh, calculate what our uh, balance would be here at, when we make this change here in year x3 so the dividends was at 20 and 30,000 for those first two years uh, 50,000 in dividends that reduces our investment account so the net amount here would be the difference between the 50, 150,000 here share of income less the 50,000 here in dividends received 100,000 here that's going to increase our investment stock account here uh, and that's going to go to retained earnings here. So our net amount for at the year X2, those two first two years, uh, net amount here is going to be 100,000. That increases our investment account here from 3 million uh, by this 100,000 up to 31. So we've increased our carrying value here that we started out with the 3,000 or 3 million here paid in cash plus the 100,000 that was going to retained earnings, simply the difference between our equity earnings and the dividends received. So total uh, investment stock account at the when we made this change should be $3,100,000. So this T account here just shows how you'd break down and how you'd have to account for your share of income when you're uh, converting the fair value, those years that we're using the fair value method here, less the dividends receive, again, for those years use, uh, using the fair value method. So what we would ultimately do here, and we're going to look at it when we make our journal entries here, this is where we change to the fair value to the equity method here. So what we're going to do, we're, we've paid the what we to record this we would have reduced our cash here credited our cash for three million dollars and then we would also credit or increase our remain retained earnings for that hundred thousand dollars here the difference between the equity earnings and our dividends received and then we would debit our investment account here for the balance that would be the thirty one hundred dollars that was what we uh, what we determine the carrying value would be here when we made that change. Okay, so looking at it from our T account here and how we had to handle our, our investment stock account here in T account form where we had to handle that share of our income over those years that we used the fair value method and also the dividends received, how we handle those over that using the fair value method here to determine what our change here is when we convert it over here to the equity method here. Okay, so let's look at let's look at how we'd record this here. Okay, here so here's Corp A's investment in Corp B. Uh, first investment it was for one million dollars in year X1. That gave Corp A a 10% holding interest in Corp B. And then the second investment here was for $3 million in year X3. That raised their holding interest up to 30% here. And this is where they had to change here. You change from the fair value method where we had the 10% holding interest to the equity method here with the 30% holding interest. So that this is what we're going to look at for our, our entry so let's go down here and let's look at these entries one at a time and let's just start here i got them labeled here a b c d and so forth and i've got the various accounts here that we'd use here that the adjustments that we'd have to make here tra uh, trans transforming over here from the fair value method to the equity method so for our first entry here that was that first investment here credit or reduce our cash here by one million dollars here so credit goes to uh, reduce our cash for one million dollars and then we would have set up this account available for sale 
securities here. Again, using the fair value method here in that first for that first investment here, we would have debit or increased our available for sale securities here by one million dollars. So that takes care of that first investment here. Now we come down to the dividends here in year X1 and year X2. That's going to be dividends we received here under the fair value method here or for year X1 and year X2, let's go down and look at them. That was the uh, for year 20,000 here in year X1, 30,000 in year X2. So debit or increase our dividends received here, our cash account by that amount. And then moving over to for uh, under the fair value method here, we would recognize it as revenue here on our income statement. That was for the first year dividends, credit it for 20,000, second year here, uh, credit it here for 30,000. So we've taken care of our dividends here for the first two years. Now let's move over to, okay, when you're using the fair value method, you're gonna have an adjustment account here, a fair value adjustment account for the securities here, and then you're also gonna have an unrealized holding gain or loss here. And I'm gonna just throw these numbers out. Let's just say here in year X1, we have the fair value adjustment to our available for sale securities here. It actually increased here. The adjustment, we increased our available for sale securities here by 95,000. So we would have debited our fair value adjustment here by 95,000. And then the credit would have gone to an unrealized holding gain or loss here. In this case, it was a gain credit it here for $95,000. Now, before we move on from this account here, when we actually uh, transfer over from the equity or from the fair value method to the equity method, we have to close these accounts. And let's just do it now here. So in year X3, when we make this change here, we would have uh, credited out here our fair value adjustment of 95,000. And then we would our unrealized holding gains, we would have debited that out here. Uh, by 95,000. So we removed our fair value adjustment and unrealized holding gain or loss here when we switch from the fair value method here to the equity method. So we've taken care of that. So next, let's look at what we have here. Our investment in our stock, uh, let's look at D. What would be here in D here? So the first investment here, this is what we have to transfer out here. So what we would do here, let's go up to our fair value for, this is when we make the adjustment here. For that first investment here, we got to transfer it from the available for sale securities here, credit it out, that one, first $1 million investment. So that erases our uh, net, so our available for sale holdings would be netted out here $1 million, but the transfer or the debit would go to the investment stock account here using this equity method here, debit that here, increase our uh, $1 million for our investment stock account. Okay, so that's taken care of. Now the next one here would be that second investment that we have to look at. And let's move up here and look at that here. So uh, remember, we have to take and reduce our cash here by $3 million. So we credit our cash account here for $3 million. So this is the E that we're looking at here. And then what would be the other one here? So uh, credit cash here for $3 million. And then our investment in stock account here, uh, we would have debited that here for $3,100,000 for that second investment. And then remember that balancing amount here went to retained earnings. So we credit or increase our retained earnings here by $100,000. So the debits and credits all balance here. So that was a critical thing here. So credit here of $100,000 to retained earnings. And then the uh, other credit here was a reduction to cash of $3,000 or $3 million. So we have uh, credits here of $3,100,000. That balances with our investment in our stock account here, $3,100,000. Okay, so we've taken care of our second investment here. Now the only thing we have to deal with is that uh, income, that share net income here. That would be our F item here that... Um, using the equity, or again, the equity method here, transferred over the equity method here in your X3, our F here, amount here, we debit or increase our equity uh, investment stock account here by 360,000, and then the credit would go to revenue. We would have recognized that as revenue here, 360,000 here. That's for that share of net income here after we've transferred over to the equity method. That increases our investment stock account here. And then the last thing we have to deal with is that dividend received here. So 
dividend received in year X3, again, under the equity method here, that was at 120,000. Now remember, that reduces our, our uh, investment stock account here in the equity method. So that would credit or our G number here, our G that I got lettered here, that would reduce our investment stock account here by 120,000. And then uh, that was the credit. Then the debit would go to the cash account. We would have received 120,000 here in cash for those dividends. Okay, so I guess that takes care of all our entries. So the only thing you, thing you have to be dealing with here is just remember, let's go back up here for when we made this change from the fair value method to the equity method here, we had to account for the difference here that with our cash payment, our actual payment that we made here to purchase, uh, Corp, uh, Corp A had to make the payment to that extra amount to, Corp, uh, to purchase Corp B here. And then we had to account for the different, the investment here had to be increased here because we actually had a change. We had to account for the difference between the equity earnings here and the dividends we received under the fair value method. So in this case, our retained earnings increased by 100,000. Our cash payment was $3 million. So our investment account here went up to $3,100,000. So again, let's go back here and just look at it one more time here, just so you understand that just get these, you're gonna have these cash accounts here where you're gonna have some investments and you're gonna have to take care of your dividends your, it's really your dividends and investments that go into this under both methods here. But when you're changing over here from the fair value method to the uh, equity method, you're actually setting up different accounts. You have to transfer uh, fair value method you had set up as available for sales securities here. And when you moved over to the equity method, you had to set up the investment stock account and you had to make that transfer of the uh, from the fair value whatever was sitting in your fair available for sale account that had to be closed out and transferred into the investment stock account here and then the other thing is uh, remember with the fair value method you had some fair value adjustment accounts here in unrealized holding gains and losses so that was uh, simply for the fair value method you used two different accounts here and then those had to be closed out uh, when that uh, transfer was made or the exchange, a difference when you changed over from the fair value method to the equity method. And then that the only other thing is remember with the equity method here, any dividends you receive reduces your investment account here. And again, any income or net income that was shared that would increase your investment account. Okay, so that will about summarize it for our uh, journal entries or entries that we'd have to make here when we transfer from, transfer from the fair value method to the equity method.